People always ask us, how did we meet? 10 years of marriage, five kids later, and now we're here to share our story. Okay, so we met through a mutual friend in junior college. And I will interrupt if he defers from the truth because his mind and my mind, we just have no. two different I am memories. 100% accurate at and all times. And that's 100% alive. <laughs> okay. All right. So we met through a mutual friend at junior college, and it was on a random day, and she was like, hey, this is my friend Kayana. True, true. And she you was like, know. hey, this is Ezekiel. And uh, we met, and she, to be honest, Though my wife is beautiful, I didn't see anything spe spectacular on that day. Uh, I was right. not captivated. It wasn't memorable to me either. Okay. All right. <laughs> we're we're going to prove that wrong a little bit later. Um, so uh, we met. She was really nice, uh, and I believe I was nice to her, and we just kept on moving. Uh, we saw each other one more time. She told me I looked like Dwayne Martin. Everything was cool. Mm. Still was, being cordial. Still being cordial. Then one more time we saw each other, December of 2005. Yes. And uh, I told her about my dad and how he was a pastor, and uh, I went to church a lot. That was and interesting. She was intrigued, and um, she told me True. that she would love to come to my church. True. That's when I knew. I love the Lord, you guys. No, I no, love no. the Lord. Until this day, I still love church. <laughs> I, I love to raise my hands. Um, I grew up in the church, so that raise was not my hands. Uh -huh. I enjoy worship. See, that I know I know how the ladies be. And she looks, she, so she was like, I would love to attend your church. And I was like, mm hmm. Here's my number. When you want to come <laughs> to church, let me know. And you know, I, I just I, I just perceived I her, or I, I assume she was just one of those girls who tried to pretend to be a church girl just so that they could potentially be close or whatever the case may be. Not because everybody wanted to be close to me, but you know Clearly how human beings are. Think. Human beings, human beings like to do things like that. And so the day came when she was supposed to come to my church and uh, I got that text Sunday morning saying she couldn't make it. Like I said, because I was a church girl, my mother told me you need to fulfill your obligations at your church okay. home okay. until um, that is done. Mm -hmm. you but in visit my church. eyes, okay. it sounded like another excuse. And I was just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Cool. She told she promised me she'll come back later on that evening. The I, same day still. I did not have timing. high hopes. I didn't have high hopes. But she came. And when she walked through those doors. And what I tell you? When she walked through those lobby doors of that church uh -huh. that night, what listen, happened? it's like. The doors swung open, time stopped. The angels began to play the harps. Oh, man, in the Brian McKnight tune. <laughs> it was just beautiful, like a dance floor opened up. <laughs> She just looked. She just looked amazing. Her hair was blowing in the wind. I was just. I like, knew he was feeling oh. me. My, no, she no. <laughs> I was like, why didn't I see this on the first day? She was gorgeous. And I don't know if God allowed me to have my eyes open because she kept her word. And I was just so impressed that she came, and she was just gorgeous. Like, and, and physically she's gorgeous, but I just I felt like it was so much more that night. And um, I could tell that after that night, even though I was just super enthralled, she was into me too. I say this because, you know, I walked into the car that night. Oh, no. See, After service I, was over, tell his story. I walked into the car uh -huh. and, uh, you know, just being the gentleman and the man of God, the man of God that God has called me to be, I walked into the car and uh, I want to say good night and I want to give her this church hug, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, I give I give everyone that church, that side, it's a rib cage hug. I tried uh -huh. to give her the rib cage hug and you know what she did? I've been really trying. She wrapped her little arms around my neck. Oh, uh, she wrapped her little arms around my neck. It was almost like she wanted to two-step cha-cha slide. So I'm like, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, slow down. Hold on. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Hold on. I am so happy. I had my friend Karen who introduced us. I, she's like a sister to me. She's and hard. I also had my sister, my oldest sister, there with me as well. This is what really happened. We were leaving because anybody that's been to a Nigerian church, you know they know how to pray from sun up to sundown. That was my first time ever experiencing anything like that. So when service was over, I was ready to go because I was tired. We left, we didn't even tell him bye. I figured I'll send him a text and they're like, hey, I gotta go. But he comes running out, hey, 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 hey. I Thank walked you for swiftly. <laughs> I did not run. I heard his shoes scuffling <laughs> on the concrete. <laughs> Hey, I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for coming. Let me give you guys a hug and walk you to your car. Now, I did probably hug him 
tighter than what he was used to because we have settled this debate. And I said, show me how I hugged you. And when he finally did show me, I realized, I said, oh, I'm used to hugging my brothers and my daddy. So yeah, that is how no, I but, probably but, but wait, you. How, Do you yeah. hug everybody like that? I mean, you're, you're the you, only one that interprets that. It's no, that if, way. Do you, how do you hug the brothers in the church that, that you see? God bless you, brother. You know, how do you hug them? <laughs> Because if you're giving those type of hugs around, you're just throwing hugs like that the around? The Jesus in me loves the No, Jesus. no, no, that ain't Jesus. <laughs> that ain't Jesus. That's the flesh. No. Anyway. Nobody else ever interpreted my hug like that but it, him. So clearly, God was orchestrating something. Can we okay. just settle it with All that? Because right, for years, he's been telling me that I hugged him to let him know that she I was, wanted something she more. She was but feeling me there anyway. That's not even my character. Anyway, we became good friends. Like okay, best we can agree friends. on that. We, yes, we did. We became best friends yes. uh, from there From there, moving forward. We talked almost every day. And then we did talk um, every day until that one time when you was tripping. No, the, you was tripping. Okay, well, you was tripping and then you got mad at me for getting on your trip and I was just what living my life. What happened? I did what a gentleman did, should do. Okay, so we were talking every day and, and he enjoyed us talking every morning. So that was kind of like the routine. I was working at eight to three, he was working at nine to five. And we would talk before we went into work. One day he told me, I'll call you back. Okay, I'll wait for you to call me back. 24 hours went on, he didn't call me back. I'm not gonna call him back because he said he's gonna call me back. 48 hours went on, and he still didn't call me back. I get this call at work on my cell at a time that we normally don't talk, so I'm like, oh, he's calling me. Um, let me pick up. And the first thing goes, hello? I'm like, is everything okay? He's like, I can't take it anymore. Why haven't you called me? I said, because you said you would call me back. Let me tell you, from now on, we need to talk every day. Why are you making me sound like my... Well, like I should have known right there throat. he was crazy, but I kept going along with it. <laughs> Next. And, <laughs> Next. And then we got married. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta tell y'all, I forgot. The night that she came to the church and she gave me that hug, she mm. called me that night, ladies. Listen to this. She called me that night, I mean... To say thank you. It wasn't too late, but she called me and she said, hello. And I was like, uh, <clears throat> who is this? She said, it's me. I said, my <laughs> Lord, have mercy, have mercy. And she was saying like, um, I just want to let you know that I thoroughly enjoyed the service. And I also want to let you know that it is so rare to find a young man like you. You had me sound like a church who mother. Who loves Cut it the out. Lord with all of his heart <laughs> and who's so handsome, who dresses Wait from a head minute. to Wait a minute, first toe. of all, he had on these baggy clothes who wears crushed velvet? Yeah, crushed velvet with gold. Do you still have that? Wait, hold on. Do you still have that vest? I, and I, I used to think he walked with his knees bent because his pants were so baggy. Who wears baggy church pants and had the belt around his butt? But what's the purpose I, of, of, of uh, sagging in church? Okay, I'll, I'll admit this. My wife upgraded me, yes, uh, so I did. I, I'm a different person than I was. Like, ladies, yes, like if your man looked like this, there's a picture should be on the screen right now. If your man looked like this. And God brought him to you like this. Would it be a yes or a no? God work on him, or I you reject him ugly. and send me the you right one. Ugly. I, I'll, I'll say that. No, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, so we became really, really great friends, and True. I think, I think that that's the moral of our marriage and the uh, the moral of any message that I would yeah. give to young couples that are growing or uh, people that find someone that they seem like they should be pursuing or whatever the case may be, become friends. Make like, sure you have a friendship. Because even when I'm mad at my husband, I can talk to my friend. And I'll tell him, I'm not talking to you as a wife. You're my friend, so be my friend. Yeah, and there's some, <laughs> there's some advice that she gives me, and it's sisterly advice. There's some advice that I give her, and it's like big brother advice. Like I, About himself. He gives me advice about his my husband. Yeah, I'm like, look, <laughs> listen, you need to take care of that man. Like, no, real talk. But if you don't have a friendship, like, I don't believe we have, you can have anything because there are times when you don't feel like being romantic. There are yeah. times when you actually got to handle business. I mean, you don't want to sit in the same room with someone that you are not in one accord with. And that friendship keeps us on one accord. We go to the word as friends. We pray together as friends. When there's a tragedy, that we, we don't we don't come in romance. We come in oneness, but that oneness is bound to this, this friendship that we have. And I don't think, man, we could lose everything. Um, but just having each other, having this friendship would mean everything. And I, I was just say, I, I could clown as much as I want, but I feel like I'm just so blessed to have such a beautiful friend. I married my best friend, literally. Aww. Yeah. I love you as a friend. 
Oh, I love you with the love of the Lord in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that's in the what, blood. that'll be our next video. I tell all my friends that I love them. I used to tell him I love him, and he always used to say, "I love you as a friend." Ah, so, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. In the that'll next be video. the next video. Peace, y'all. Thanks for listening.